Coming up, a new pin-related event comes to Animal Kingdom. Disney files a new patent for Guardians of the Galaxy. We go in-depth on the latest Disney Resort Hotel announcement. And in the main segment, we discuss how to get in a Disney trip state of mind. All that and more on this episode of WDW Opinion. Cue the music. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. This is the podcast where two friends, Connor. You are a child plaything. And Hank. You are a sad, strange little man. And you have my pity. Share their opinions, tips, and stories about anything and everything at Walt Disney World. Trust me, what can go wrong? Get ready, because this is WDW Opinion. We're in the tower. We are ready for takeoff. Hello, and welcome to episode number 17 of WDW Opinion, the podcast where friends talk Disney. We share our Disney World opinions, and then you share yours. Let us know what your Disney World opinions are. Follow us on social media at WDW Opinion to share your thoughts with us. And visit WDWOpinion.com to check out our blog posts on all things Disney and to see what we're up to in between episodes. I am your host, Connor Brown, and I'm joined by my co-host and Disney partner in crime, Mr. Hank Molsky. Hank, I think it's safe to say that we've made it. Yes, we have. We've, we've Episode number 17. <laughs> no. We've officially made it. Because... I know what you're going to say. The internets have been good to us. Yes. Well, why don't you go ahead, lay, lay it out there, Hank, since since you're the reason why. Oh, well, I'm sure for all the um, the loyalists out there, we've been retweeted by Len Testa, so... I mean, Boom. That, that enshrines you in the Hall of Fame. Uh, they put your name on a wall, uh, they write you a big check, uh, you get a statue in the mail. It's really something. I, I can't believe the fanfare around this. Um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. If you don't know Len, uh, you should. If you consider yourself a Disney World fan, Len Testa is an awesome, awesome guy. He is the owner and creator of touringplans.com, which is a great Disney trip planning tool you should use. He also is the co-author on the Unofficial Guide to Disney World and, I believe, Disneyland. He has a podcast called The Disney Dish that we've talked about before where he and Jim Hill just share Disney news stories. Honestly, he just seems like a really, really, really cool guy, has some great takes, some great opinions, and we're just really big fans. And he really talks about um, this Travelocity thing a lot. Right, Priceline, Priceline, Price line. Connor yeah. Brown. Sorry. No, it's um. So yeah, I guess why why do we even care? Um, because we're maniacs. But we were sharing <laughs> some tips with uh, Len and his followers. Um, he gets all into these Priceline alerts or the Priceline Express deals. Disney fans out there, pro tip: write it down. Priceline Express deals. If you don't use Express deals already for any type of travel, immediately start to do that because. You can really snag some great hotel rooms. I'm going to sound like an advertisement at 60% of the cost, and that it would actually stay, uh, actually cost to stay at that hotel. But um, that applies to a lot of Disney World resorts. At least in 2018, Disney has been turning to Priceline Express deals to fill rooms more than they have in the past. May not be true come the launch of Galaxy's Edge, but in the meantime. We are seeing some sweet deals, and we got a really good one for our trip coming up uh, in November that we told Len about, and he was very impressed, enough so that he could retweet us. The big kicker here is when you book it, you don't know what hotel it is. Correct. So it's kind of a puzzle to figure out, and Hank has come through this last one. Hank came up with a way to basically solidify that you were picking Coronado Springs for the most part. Correct. I mean, like, yeah, it really comes down to it gets a little dicey when you want to when you try to select a deluxe resort because a lot of the deluxe resorts that are on the property in the Disney World area on the Priceline Express deal, the Bonnet Creek area is the one that you want to select, folks. Hey, follow our Twitter account to see some more detail on this because I don't want to get too detail oriented. But the Bonnet Creek area. Um, if you start to try to select some deluxe ones, there's a chance that you could end up at one of those ones on the north end of the property. Um, what are all the ones up there? Like, um, 
Waldorf Astoria. Yeah. Um, in Bonnet Creek, there's there's a Hyatt up there. Yeah. Um, the ones a couple that are all fairly ones. new. They're really nice hotels that you can get for a great price, but uh, you lose that ability to do, you know, booking 60 days out, uh, having the transportation on the Magical Express to the airport, uh, all that fun that comes with a Disney Resort stay, a Disney Resort extended stay. So we were happy to grab that Coronado Springs reservation for $87 oh, yeah. a night. Oh, yeah. $87 a night, a sweet deal. We'll definitely have a show on that later, probably some articles too, because that's a great money-saving tip. Um, but like Hank said, follow us at WDW Opinion on Twitter. You can see what Len was engaging with us there and the tips that Hank just talked about. But now, let's get into News to Opinion. This is our weekly segment where we each pick a Disney news story from the past week to discuss and share our thoughts and opinions on. My Disney news story, new pin quest limited time event being offered at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park. Connor, I'm so glad you picked this because I never clicked into one of the articles. I always just read the Twitter story and I still, I'm going to find out right now along with our listening audience, is this a physical pin or is it digital? Now go. This is a physical pin. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm so happy. You guys should see his face. He is oh, I'm so, so happy. excited. I uh, didn't know. Have... I didn't click into any of the articles. Go ahead. Uh, you do have to buy it. Um, so, anyways, guests visiting Animal Kingdom theme park can grab their detective hats and solve clues in their hunt for six special pins during Pin Quest, a wild edition of a Disney pin scavenger hunt. So, how do you participate? You stop by the Outpost Shop to purchase the Quinn. Pin Quest Adventure Kit, which includes a lanyard, Navigate Ear, and ears in all capitals, decoder metal, park map, and a storage pouch, along with your first clue card that features a special assignment. Um, the quest, after you've completed the first task, you find a cast member, and then have them stamp your map. Then you'll trade in the ticket portion of your clue card for a pin, which needs to be aligned with the Navigate Ear decoder so that you can determine where to go for your next clue and so on and so forth a couple participating locations the outpost mombasa marketplace wind traders circa zong bazaar chester and hester's dinosaur treasures and discovery trading company i think the total of this comes out to oh boy 15 bucks oh huh Something like that. There you go. Not bad. But yeah, the pins look pretty cool. Um, The reason I did this is I wanted our listeners to know about this and other offerings you can do in the parks that aren't attraction-based or show-based things. This is one of them. This is an upcharge, obviously, but there's plenty of other ones that aren't. Um, they do this from time to time, the pin quests, and pin trading is a show, multiple shows in and of itself, that we can dive into later. Um, but this is cool just because if you've been, you know, a hundred times to Animal Kingdom and you want to explore something else, this and a couple other things are great ways to kind of get lost in the parks and go down areas you've never been to before. Um, Agent P's. Uh, World Showcase Adventure, where you're Perry the Platypus in Epcot's another good one. Um, a Pirate's Adventure is good to kind of go around Adventureland in Magic Kingdom. Huh. Also, pro tip, if you want to ride Pirates of the Caribbean and the wait's a little long, go into a Pirate's Adventure and ask them, hey, is the prize today still a fast pass? And if the cast member says, I believe it is, you can do the the, the uh, adventure real quick, and then you're able to exchange in your map once you solve the puzzle for a fast pass to go ride. I never, I never knew that. Wow. Does I'm glad I listened to this podcast. Yeah, there you go. It's not always guaranteed, but it's something to ask, and it's a cool way where you're not waiting in line. You're probably waiting, you know, spending the same amount of time it takes to wait in line as it is to do this, but... It's something else fun. Another big one, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, which is also completely uh, free. Yes, of course. Um, that's very cool. People love that, by the way. There are so many locals that just go into the parks 
just go into Magic Kingdom, rather, to do just that. Um, we should do that sometime. I would, yeah. It seems pretty complicated, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Pokemon on crack, basically. Yeah, in Disney um, World with a ton of people. In Disney World with a ton of people, and they're all staring at you like, why are you staring at this window? Just yeah. watch. And just why aren't watch. you Why aren't you running to the next ride? Exactly. Or eating a corn dog. Or doing anything at all, really. Um, yeah. So I just like pointing these out because, like I always say about, about the parks, you know, they're a world unto itself. There's so many new things for you to go see and do each time you're there. Um, so your next trip down there, try and branch out and do one of these. Don't, you know, go gung-ho. Try and explore something, and these are great ways to do just that. The um, Play Disney Parks app also, I think, is going to be a big deal when it comes to, um, you know, exploring other areas of the parks and stuff. Yes, not this. I, I have to come clean. I thought yeah. this was the story about how, aren't they offering pins now in the app? So, no. There's digital See, badges that I, you can earn. BS. That's BS. But... I got all but excited for that. There was also an article where they have limited edition pins for the Disney Play app. So if you've been oh, in the app cool and you too. see the cart the cartoon kind of mm-hmm. um, designs, those pins that they're selling right now, limited edition, mimic those are that so styling. Cool. I love those designs. And um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but they actually just announced that Art of Animation now has a play of Disney play disney parks How about that if there Thank already you. weren't enough people that went there just to explore that area anyways exactly so this you know app game is expanding to the resorts hmm. i assume it'll expand to disney springs as well so that's my disney news story for the week how about you hank disney patents new rotating car technology for guardians of the galaxy roller coaster at epcot Uh, This is from WDW News Today. The Disney company is at it again. They have submitted a a patent for a new roller coaster car design that will allow the the cars to rotate on an axis during the course of the ride. The patent is specifically for the roller coaster cars for the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster at Epcot, as seen in leaked photographs some time ago. Um, there were some photos and videos of a car being tested on tracks, uh, months back that, uh, it was like this yellow train. It did not, it's not like the actual track that this thing's going to be on, but it's pretty simple. I, I think if you think, um, I mean, most, uh, a lot of rides at Disney world have this rotating car aspect to move through different show scenes and them applying that to a roller coaster is very innovative. Um, something that. I think it's even in this article that di- people have speculated that Disney's wanted to do for some time, uh, but they've been kind of trapped in the fact that they don't have enough battery power on board for a roller coaster to cleverly charge these things that need to rotate and, you know, memorize track patterns and show patterns. Uh, but they've patented something very cool where it's actually charged under sensors underneath the rail as this thing moves along the track. Very cool looking thing. Uh, I just wanted to bring this up because while our excitement is maybe tempered a little bit since the whole James Gunn fiasco with um, uh, Disney and who's going to direct a third Guardians of the Galaxy, which is still up in the air, um, and this ride show, and uh, it's it's just a... Let's move past that. I'd like to focus on the exciting part of this ride, which is... They've got a pretty cool technology that's coming in there for a ride that is they're touting to be so long for a roller coaster, like the longest indoor roller coaster in the mm-hmm. world or something similar to that effect, is that there's going to be some pretty cool show sequences in this. You're going to be rotating to watch stuff. I feel like it'll be most similar to maybe Escape from Green Guts at uh, Universal Studios. That's what I got the vibe of from as well. Um Stories about patents are always tricky because it's kind of like stories about concept cars, yep. right? You see something so um, off in the future, and when it gets time to come into market, they've taken one piece from it, you know? You're right. So that's the way, you know, 
patent stories typically work. You're not going to see anything to a T. It might be they patent this technology for this one specific thing and they just want to cover their butts so that they can yeah. have that technology in their back pocket. Um, I should have a foldable iPhone by now if uh, that story wasn't true. Exactly. I think Apple like patented stuff like that. Crazy oh. stuff all the time. Oh, yeah. Innovative companies are always, you know, just trying to patent things that they don't know if it would actually work. Right, just in case right. they, they do come up with it, they can make the big bucks off of it, which is totally in their, you know, you know, intellectual yeah, rights yeah. And, and things like that. Um, I think what this signifies, regardless of what they do, is that, like Hank was saying, this is going to be a very, very cool ride, unlike anything you've seen at Walt Disney World yeah. or maybe really even a Disney park before. Yeah. So we will, we will stay tuned. There's a lot up in the air, but one thing is confirmed with this. It's going to be awesome. For a middle segment this week, we want to go in depth on a news story from the past week and explore it a bit further. On Monday, a rumor was confirmed by Disney that a new resort hotel is coming to the property. This nature-inspired resort will be nestled in between Fort Wilderness cabins and campgrounds and the Wilderness Lodge. This is a write-up coming from WDWinfo.com. A new nature-inspired mixed-use Disney resort will welcome families in 2022 along the picturesque shoreline of Bay Lake. Located between Disney's Wilderness Lodge and Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground, the resort project joins three others underway at Walt Disney World Resort, bringing a total of more than 1,700 new rooms and proposed Disney Vacation Club villas online over the next four years. The deluxe resort, which will be themed to complement its natural surroundings, will include more than 900 hotel rooms and proposed Disney Vacation Club villas spread across a variety of unique accommodations. The soon-to-be Named Resort is slated to be Disney's 16th Disney Vacation Club property. So, a couple points to make here. When they're saying the 1,700 new hotel rooms and proposed DVCs that will come online in the next four years, they mean this spot, they mean the new Riviera, they mean the new Tower at Coronado, and they mean, I guess, Star Wars? Must be it. Maybe. It has to be. They've announced Maybe that. Might, that's, that's yeah, official. but I don't know if they've given us a date yet for when it opens. Huh. Interesting. But, so the reason I wanted to dig into this um, a bit more is there were a couple points I wanted to discuss. First off, this is taking over the area of River Country. River Country was Disney World's first water park and it's very very interesting um i'll link a i'll link to a video in our show notes page so wdwopinion.com slash episode 1717 um i'll t- talks all about river country and it was a very cool water park that i actually went to as a child oh fun i it didn't... was it was half in bay lake half in just you know normal clean water um which was partly the reason that it shut down the the water was was very hard to regulate because half of it was coming in from bay lake um among other reasons but um the whole premise behind it was it's like you're going down to the watering hole you know it Mm -hmm. was closed a number of years ago and ever since then it's just sat abandoned And if you ever take the boat from Magic Kingdom to Fort Wilderness, cabins and campgrounds, you actually pass by it, which I always thought was so interesting because it was, you know, right out in the open um, on on Bay Lake right right there. A couple months ago, people started seeing surveyors over there, and sure enough, this is exactly where this hotel will be going. It'll be taking over the area that formerly, formerly housed River Country, so really right smack dab in the middle of Wilderness Lodge and Fort Wilderness. Um, What I really want to focus on is the artist renderings here. So, Hank, you've seen the picture of the proposed picture of the Porcashier, which is the main entrance, 
Mm -hmm. um, for this hotel in the front of the building. What were your first thoughts on it? Um, Connor, if you, if I were, I, I wouldn't have to go more than like 15 feet away. And I understand that it's the artist rendering. Hey, maybe they're using the, I mean, clearly they're using a very similar firm. So much like the stuff we're already seeing for Coronado. Uh, the so, Riviera one. So that was my big thing. It, it looks so similar to Riviera, which is the new standalone Disney Vacation Club Resort, and the new Coronado Tower at Correct. Coronado Springs. That's, yes. Um, in that it looks generic upscale but generic oh connor it's so boring i hate all those slate tiles and sharp rounded corners and stuff on the it's just it's just lazy when they're talking about you know taking cues from its natural environment this isn't it i always love first off this is just a funny comment i love um artist renderings of, of like when they put cars there because you're like oh well that's clearly just a like a like a GMC Yukon, you know? Yeah, yeah. But they can't put any things on it. But that's besides the point. But it just looks like it's it's just hard to describe. It just looks so generic. And hey, you know, it, I lived in Phoenix for a while. It looks yes, like every exactly. damn building in the middle of Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to stay at the AC Hotel in the middle of Tempe, Arizona. Or even even an office building in, in, in Arizona. That's or, very or anywhere, true. You know? Yeah. It looks so office key from its natural surroundings. You see, Connor, I hate that because it, that just means that is lazy either writing or design or something. It's a lazy press release for that reason because you don't just drop trees in front of a hotel. I mean, they're not even like uh, it just they're just trees in front of the hotel. They're not taking cues from the natural surrounding. These sharp edges everywhere. And especially when you walk in one direction and you have something that looks identical to the old Faithful Inn in Wilderness Lodge, <laughs> yeah, right. this gigantic log cabin, and in the other direction you have a log cabin that's been there since the 70s in Pioneer Hall, and, you know, that's where you go for Trails End, and there's, you know, cabins and campgrounds there. This just feels out of place. A deluxe resort exists and ties to nature in Wilderness Lodge, right? That's 100% a deluxe resort. Yep. But it still fits like it, it still seems like it fits in the wilderness. This, and again, it's only one picture right now. Oh, I hope that, you know, there is enough feedback or enough, you know, surveying of crowds that when Disney floats this type of picture out there, hopefully they receive some type of feedback of people, you know, standing up and, you know, having a conversation like you and I do right now. And when you get this one and the new Coronado Tower and the new Riviera Hotel renderings back to back to back, and they look like it could be the same exact hotel, just three different buildings, that's, I think, what, what the story is here. It's, it's how they decided to announce it in that they knew that these things probably looked identical, right? It's just, it seems lazy, doesn't it? I, yeah. It just, it's unfortunate timing, you know. And I feel like you kind of, and it's it's a bummer for a Disney fan or someone that's watching this news develop because it makes you go back and then go, huh, now I don't really like the the Coronado Tower as much anymore because now it feels lazy. Right, or right, you might right. have been like, oh, this is pretty cool, yeah. contemporary, modern. They don't yeah. have a lot of this stuff. and. It'll be fun to see Disney put their own touch on it. And now you're like, well, hang on a second. Yeah. Are they just, they're just building Marriott's all over yeah. the property. I don't want that. I, I wanted to go. You stay on property to go to a Disney resort, you know? And I think that this kind of comes to a, to a bigger story. Um, Disney has incredible occupancy rates, you know, 80%, some, sometimes higher than that. Like incredible occupancy rates, meaning year-round consistently you know 80 percent of rooms are filled something like that right. for disney vacation club it bounces up to 90 even sometimes higher than that year-round absolutely insane numbers dvc sells it sells like hotcakes originally it wasn't supposed to be like that but they've definitely taken strides and made accommodations to to have plenty of dvc people and plenty of rooms that's why we're getting the new riviera that's why we're getting you know this new 
um, hotel as well, and we constantly get new villas at all the other deluxe resorts as well. Um, my thing here is if they're just building rooms for the sake of building rooms, then something's got to give at some point. People yeah. aren't going to want to stay there, right? I wonder what occupancy is going to be like at this thing. Like why it is such a strange market to target, you know? It just doesn't feel like – what. why would you select this hotel over Wilderness Lodge or Copper Creek right now? I wouldn't, mostly I, because – you know, I mean, unless say, you really like Marriott's. I don't know. Look at us jumping way far ahead. It's not a convincing rendering, though. And, well, most people say, you know, well, why would you stay use DVC and stay at Saratoga if you don't own? Well, maybe I want to go to Disney Springs, but it's also gigantic, you know, mm-hmm. so there's plenty of options there. Here, it's not going to be as big, and there's, you know, one option next to you in Wilderness Lodge. And guess what? They also have ones at contemporary contemporary the poly and at grand floridian that you can stay at too yeah so it just seems like right out the gate this might be the bottom of the barrel obviously i think they're going to do a good job with it it's just that's a really good point connor yeah it's an overall idea of are they just building to build you know with, with no purpose for it and i wanted to focus in on something else too you know Pop Century and the All Star Resorts are going through room refurbs, refurbs now, and they're all becoming very, very, very modern. Hank and I have seen pictures of the real rooms; they look awesome. We're going to be staying in one in a couple weeks in Pop Century. We'll give you the full review. But one thing about the Pop reno- renovations and the All Star renovations is they look very, 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 very similar. There's certain accent pieces in each room that tell you this is pop and this is all stars, but the general theme of it seems very similar, which is why I want to ask this question. Hank, do you think this is something we're going to see in more and more hotels, these kind of cookie cutter, meaning they're all the same renovations and that all the interior rooms are just going to be looking exactly the same no matter where you stay on property? Here's the thing. I will, yes and no. I will counter with the fact that, you know what? If they're going to build me a nice, contemporary, clean, cookie-cutter room in a value-style resort, bring it on, baby. You can make all those rooms the same and give them different accents, and I'm totally in. Mm -hmm. You're there. I mean, like the, the biggest draw in the past in those value resorts has just been the giant objects outside. Yeah. And the fact that you're at a Disney resort, you know, it's not like you're on a monorail loop or you've right. got the water taxi to anywhere. Right, right, right. You're staying there for a bed and yeah. like, you know, maybe to go to the pool or, you know, to save money too. But having that added benefit of like a clean room that's not old and drab, I think is a big benefit. But then it's like you're saying is if this starts to spread a little bit too much, that's when it starts to bleed into these other rooms, and you're like, you know what? I was staying at Wilderness Lodge because it had character. It's yeah. not on the resort loop. Mm-hmm. The boats really aren't that efficient. I was staying there because it's a gorgeous hotel, you know? And then you drop this thing next door, and you see them, you know, like, oh, yeah, well, it'll be like Wilderness Lodge. People will sell like hotcakes. Uh, it'll be contemporary. People love the new rooms in the uh, Pop Century Resort. But, you know, make it modern. And all of a sudden, you're like, well, what? hang on. You've stripped all the character. The When I first saw the refurbishments for Pop, the first thing I thought was, wow, these look a lot like the refurbs they had just done a few years earlier at Coronado kind of clean modern and stuff like that so i was like huh that's interesting i didn't think anything of it because i was like well it looks a little more you know pops of color and stuff but once they rolled out to all star i was like well here's you know two values and a moderate that look very similar in interior wise so um, they do have to they got to up their game on the design i mean but we've stayed in we've stayed in copper creek uh on your dvc yeah. Um, family and yeah. those are very they take a lot of elements from those similar like you know that very modern true. room very and true. it does look nice they've found a way to kind of blend all that together in there but 
that has been that has been one of my dad's big things too he's like it seems like all the dvcs are kind of going in the same direction as well you know and it's the accents that are making it um you know let you know what where you're staying at yeah we'll see what the view out the the window looks like because that'll be important (laughs) Exactly. And again, I don't want to, you know, bash this before we, we know barely anything about it. I just want to get the word out there that hopefully this isn't something, you know, where we're starting to see the same exact thing being built just so hotel rooms can be built for the sake of building. Well, you know what Disney will tell you, Connor? In uh, about four years when this hotel's done, what? you're saying, and you're saying, you know what, Disney, I want to stay in a room that has character. I want to stay somewhere that's immersive. I'm sick of these cookie cutter rooms. And they say, you know what, Connor? Do we have the room for you? And it's only going to cost seven hundred dollars a night, and you got to stay there for two nights. And you get to go to space, Star and... Wars hotel, baby. And you're you say, damn it. First off, a place where your actions have consequences sounds just awful. We should be doing the opposite of that at yeah, hotels, right? don't you think? Yeah, especially at hotel. Well, we'll see when we. Split I want to it. go back to my room without any regret. I don't need. Yeah, I I, I go back and shower at Disney <laughs> to wash away the grime and the the decisions of the day. Yeah, and all the sweat from the parks. I don't need to come back and some, uh, male or like some maid robot to come to my room and accost me for, it, for drinking because too I have much Nerf and... herd or blood on my hands. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Well, I killed, I killed a Wookiee in the park today. You know, I don't. I came back to shower and sleep. Not be. I'm not. I'm not arrested. proud of what I did, but I did what I had to do to protect my family. Well, we'll see how that goes. Now it's time for our main segment. For obsessive Disney World fans, time can be measured in one of two ways. Time spent at Disney World and time spent elsewhere. But both of those ways can be fun if you have the right mindset. In reality, a trip to Disney requires the proper state of mind, both when it comes to knowing how to execute your plans and knowing how to enjoy the place once you're there. For diehard fans like Hank and myself, the leading up to and planning of a trip can bring just as much enjoyment as actually going on the trip. But there's only so much anticipation one can bear. Passing the time from one trip to the next can often feel like an eternity. But once you have the next trip planned, there are so many things you can do to get ready for it. And then, when you head back home, there are plenty of ways to keep the Disney state of mind with you too. In this segment, we are going to give you ways to prepare your mind for Disney and keep your mind that way after you return. It's all about having Disney on your mind this week on WDW Opinion. So I think a lot of our trip tips here are going to be about things on the internet that you can find to keep in the Disney mindset. So Hank, this is kind of a fun, an interesting question. Do you think you'd be this much of a of a Disney World fan if the internet didn't exist. You know, the knee-jerk rea- reaction to that should be, oh, yeah, definitely not. There's so much about the internet that I love and whatever. But, you know, I, they, I had no problem becoming a huge Disney fan as a child without even a lick of the internet. Right, right, right. So they found a way to do it back then, but they innovated and they iterated and they found a way to appeal to the next generation, which you know makes it all that more magical that it's transgenerational. You know, I I think for me, my fandom has been able to broaden quickly because of the resources available mm-hmm. on the internet. Yeah. And it's not just from you know Disney themselves; it's from fans and things like that. Um, I honestly can't say that my fandom would be at this level if it wasn't for the internet obviously i'm coming to you on a platform and everything i have right. with wdw opinion is on the internet so you know that's easier to just say but um i think because of that it it's also there's never been a better time to be a disney fan because yeah. your 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 thirst 
um, for that fandom, for, you know, exploring new ideas can easily be quenched because of the internet. Um, and of course the planning. And of course the planning. And when it comes to planning, you know, my Disney experience isn't only the best way to plan for your trip, but it's the best way to help pass the time in between when you're there and when you're not there. You know, Connor, I was thinking about this and just why, you know, Disney's built this massive machine now. Clearly it's working. Prices mm-hmm. have never been higher. Park capacity's never been tough, you know, more insane. It's just a time, it shows the success of my Disney experience. People have, you know, bemoaned this existence ever since it first rolled out. You know, oh, got to plan this and this and this. It's going to take away from the, you know, spontaneity of a park visit. Clearly it has not. I I think it's it's said and done now that this has been a successful rollout of Disney experience. Is it out of beta, Connor? <laughs> eh, who knows? Who knows? We can still say it's beta. Gamma. Yeah. But I mean if you think back to the days of, you know, playing on Roller Coaster Tycoon and that type of stuff, you get to do it in real life now, man. You get oh, to yeah. do it for a real vacation. It's like those choose your own adventure books, but in real life. Go to page ninety two. Go to your next fast pass. Yeah. Oh great. Um it is something, you know, insane. I, I do think it's a success, but I think it's a success in making this so much more than just a simple vacation you know mm-hmm. you go to the beach you pack your bags you're, you're at the beach this and my disney experience helps in you know it goes beyond that as it should be a some for many in america you know going to to disney world has become a rite of passage for many children and and they know that right they know when you're coming down here this might be your your once in a lifetime opportunity yeah they want to make sure that this is special from start to finish and mde my disney experience has helped that in so 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 many ways yeah i, I you know i sometimes obviously connor and i and a lot of you that listen to the show get so wrapped up into that app connor do you ever feel guilty when you're like just you know flipping through this, planning out the whole vacation, and you're with a group of people or with your family and stuff, and you're like, ooh, I should let them do this. And then you talk to them again. They're like, oh, I can't be bothered. I can't yeah, be bothered yeah, to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's my, I, I always get excited when my dad's like, oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> and no, when my, when my sister's like, well, what are we doing? And my dad just goes, I don't know. Talk to the vacation planner. And, and, you know, tilts his head towards me. And I'm like, yes, please talk to me yeah. so that I can tell you what everything you want. We're going to be here by 925 yeah. until uh, we can board until 1025. <laughs> you want to blame me for getting up early? That's fine. We're getting up early. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, there's something about it. It's it's not a chore at all if you – and that's another thing. The way that they design it, the way that they make it feel, the actual app experience allows you to – it feels like a game, you know? And I'm gonna get super meta here, you know. Yeah, when you're trying, when you're trying to accomplish your goals, the easiest way to do that is to break it up, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, do this task, which leads to this task, which leads to this task. When you're trying to get reach your goals of getting to your vacation, of passing the time before you can get there, my Disney experience helps with that too because they break it up so easy as well. You got your vacation planned, awesome. 100, 180 days out, great. Now you can book your dining. Um, now you can book your tours. Now you can book your fast passes. Now you can customize your magic bands. They're all important dates that you need to remember. By the way, if you want to help remembering these dates, go to wdwopinion.com. You'll sign up for our newsletter. We'll send you a Disney trip checklist that has all these dates in there for you. It's customizable. But all of this segmented out like this helps you plan but it also helps you you know pass the time until that trip occurs right you at one point you're in the dining mindset at another point you're in the fast pass mindset then you're in ooh, we get the magic bands and then once the magic bands arrive now you're like okay i'm ready to go yeah and that's a, another thing you know part of the point of today we wanted to dive deep on this is it's how does Disney do it? How do they make it one of the most popular destinations on earth to go? You know, one of the biggest, the, the biggest theme park in the world. 
by attendance. How do they how do they do it? It's because of little things like this. They know to not throw. All right, Connor, you're going to Disney World in 180 days. It's time for you to book your rides. It's time for you to book your dining. It's time for you to do this, this, this. See you later. They they know. They've had time to figure this out. And exactly like you're saying, there's little they sprinkle of hints. No two things happen on the same day in, you know, the six months leading up to your trip. They know the importance of it, right? Yeah. If you've seen any of their marketing, nowhere are they saying, you know, um, vacation, vacation, vacation. It's all about making memories. It's all about spending time with your family, important things. And the whole process just speaks volumes to that. It's it's so much more than just, you know, like I said, like a beach trip. It's it's about an experience you'll, you won't forget. And they know that experience is going to start well before you ever step foot in Orlando. Yeah, that is, it's really fascinating even to think about that because it's not, they don't bludger you over the head with it. They're not like, here's your timeline, here's the stuff coming up. It's just kind of like a gentle nudge in the right way, you know? You're kind of, you melt right into the next step and before you know it, you've got um, stuff coming in the mail. Exactly. And once you start getting that Disney mail, like your little brochures and great, you're going on a Disney trip. Here's everything you need to know about your resort. Here are your dates or whatever, you know, of when you're coming. Devour all of it. Once you start getting it, just devour all of it. Completely, you know, dive into what Disney sends you because I think what it helps get your mind ready. It helps get you excited, even if it's just, you know, it, it doesn't mean anything. They're like, okay, and then you're going to be sure to buy your tickets. When they're sending you stuff, you should have a smile on your face because yeah. it's a little memory that you have something big planned coming up. And then here we are. It's 2018, so you got to talk about it. It's that piece of mail. You know the mail piece of mail I'm going to talk about, Connor. It's when the magic bands show up. Mm. It Disney creates their first Instagrammable moment. Oh yeah. Before you even walk out your front door. So true. They so they true. know it. They know it. You get that box, even though there's a new box. I don't like it as much as the old box with uh, Elastic Girl on it. Correct. <sighs> let's have a moment of silence for that, or just let's pause and sigh. <sighs> it's this little cardboard box now. Anyways, you open it up and boom, color, magic bands, names. You're going to Disney World. Very exciting. Everyone takes a picture of that. There's no way you can't. You know what it's like? It's like when, and then you put that on when you go to the airport, you put the bands on. Uh, it's yeah. kind of like when a limo passes by and everyone's like, ooh, I wonder who important's in there. Yeah, and then when your you wife hits you on the shoulder and she's like, take that damn thing off. When you pass everyone <laughs> in the airport, the Cincinnati airport, and you have your magic band on, they're all like, oh, he's going to Disney. I'm going to yeah. Topeka. That sucks. Yeah, then your your wife goes, why is everyone looking at us? Oh, I told you to take that off. <laughs> take all of those off. You have all nine of them <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> How many colors do you have? All of them in Magic Band 1 and 2. And my um, limited edition Pandora one. Ooh. No, ooh, that I sounds fun. That. I wish I had that one. But what it is is you could easily cast all this mail aside, you know, like I do with Bill's. I just throw it in the garbage and hope nothing comes of it. Now, what you should do is experience it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you can make it as long or as short as you want, but if they're sending you stuff, open it up, read it all, get excited for it. That's what they want you to do. And, and when you do that, you're preparing yourself and you're getting your mind right for Disney. Mm. And once your mind is right and you have all those dates of when you need to book your dining, book tours, book fast passes, that's when you get to dive into other Disney content. This is like, we're going down the experts. We're going down the uh, double black diamonds here. Maybe not double black, single black. Um, it's we're in uncharted territories. Okay, for men, double black for, diamond. For if you're listening to this podcast, you're you're in the double black diamond. And that's a good thing because when you dive into this content, you're gonna start listening to podcasts, to books. You're gonna start reading blogs, and you're gonna start watching vloggers. The reason for all this is again just to get your mind right. You're going to build that anticipation up, 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 up. But you're also looking for tips. You're also looking for dining reviews. How you should go about 
X, Y, and Z. And I say this, when I wasn't in growing up, I would look at these things as a way to live vicariously through people there now. Right? I would read trip reports mm-hmm. because I wanted to get tips, but more so I wanted to ex- be experiencing Disney like I was there all the time. And once you do that, once you're able to smile, it just helps you get excited for your trip. Connor, you and I both have this issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, and why? But why do you think, Connor? What's wrong with you? That's what I want to ask you. No. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> it's something doctors have never been able to diagnose. Yeah. You and I both have this issue. First of all, what's wrong with you? No, why do we watch rides? Why do oh, my? Uh, I feel like I'm going off on my wife too much. Lovely person. I was going to say, well, why do you watch these things? Yeah. Why do you watch the ride? And I totally agree with that. I ask myself the same damn question every time I flick on a ride video. Yeah. I'm like, can't you just wait and experience it in person? What's wrong with us? Why do we watch all the rides before we go? Because I think it's one of those things where, why do you watch a trailer for a movie? You know, it gets you in the mindset. It gets you excited. But you don't watch the whole movie. (laughs) Right. That's true. But you're not, you know, experiencing it. You're not touching those things. When it comes to an attraction, it's being fully there. It's walking the queue. It's, It's being there for a lot longer than those videos that just, you know, zoom quickly through the queue it's touching things it's it's the smells and stuff like that it's just getting you ready for it really okay there we and go. the reason i feel I, better about myself i don't have to go to therapy tomorrow now well you probably still should for other reasons but we'll talk offline about that um okay what it is is a lot of the times when i'm watching these it's rides i've been on countless times before and the reason i do that is just because i smile when i'm doing it you mm-hmm. know it, it gets me excited it gets me like can't wait to go on that again, you know? That's what you're saying. Live vicariously through every all this stuff. Get ready. It's Watch your trailers. I like that. It is a trailer because you're not watching eight hours of footage of people walking through the park. You're watching two minutes on a ride. Exactly. Watch your trailers. Watch your trailers. <laughs> or, you know, listen to a podcast. Like listen to this podcasts one. like WDW Opinion where you should also probably rate and review us on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Very nice. Um, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Nice but recording. I will say, once you start going down this rabbit hole of podcasts, of blogs, of books and vloggers, what you'll start to realize is they're exploring little niches of Disney World where you wouldn't have ever thought to go. And that just helps you experience something new. Like I was talking about, about the pins and the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, that's something you might have have never done before but it can totally add to your experience because it's something you've never experienced while you've been on a trip you know it's those little yes, things sir it's learning from the quote-unquote experts but i'll tell you one thing when it comes to living vicariously being oh, a no. disney oh, no. there's a couple things i like to throw on on the on the youtube that a couple of my friends hate but i love it oh god i, I don't think i've ever watched this on youtube You've never watched Stacy? No, not on YouTube. Oh, I love Stacy. I don't think anyone we travel to Disney World with has an appreciation for Stacy the way that you and I do. I, oh God, <laughs> Stacy is the in-room host of um, the Must Do's at Disney World. The must time do. to do, time to do the Must Do's. I used, hear used to they're be top 10. potentially planning on re-recording that fairly soon. Dave from Jim Hill, wasn't it? She's been doing it for a very long time. It used to be top ten. It yeah. was like, and now it's just must do's. Um, but she redid it for, for you know, Magic she, Bands, she, MDE. Yes. Um, she has knocked she, on Pandora though. Uh, she's done a voiceover for it. Oh my God! Did she really? Yeah, because there's also oh shoot, I thought it was just that picture of the the girl. That just looks up at the sky at Pandora. They're going to use that B-roll footage until the until end of time. Until, until the, the end of time. You know exactly the one. <sighs> oh, I do. They do have a commercial for it at the end. Oh, she also had to do it for Disney Springs, though. Mm, yeah, so she had to do, do it a She lot did do Disney times. Springs. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, I, I fear that we could be reaching the end of Stacy time. No, 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 <laughs> no. No. Listen, I don't know why I love She's it so immortal. much. She's immortal. I just do. I'll turn it on. I'll be like, I've seen this a million times, 
but also to be fair when i go to the parks like when we're at gonna stay at pop century i'm gonna put on the tv every every second we step in the door and it's gonna be stacy it's gonna be stacy my only here's one of my beefs though because it's the trailer uh, that is we're talking movie trailers connor that is absolutely a trailer oh yeah that's your trailer once you're in the uh, in the area before you go, and that's the way to get hyped. The thing I always get a little skittish about, though, when you're going with someone for the first time, can't stand that it shows um, Expedition Everest going backward. Oh, yeah. It's like the twist. That's so true. Like, Stacy, why do you blow that for me? Every time, I just don't want people to see it. I believe the quote is, um, we seem to be missing some track. <laughs> and then it goes backwards. And you're like, Stacy, God. You All right, Connor. Jokester. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. Um, you can also watch Today at Disney World or Today at Disney Resort. I believe Resort TV One on YouTube is a channel. Um, this is very sad because I don't even have that as a note. But um, uh, it's like that what's going on at your resort or what's going on at Walt Disney Resort today. Oh, nice. So it's like what the weather is, what the hours are. Oh, that's going to make me sad. I'm going to put that on in like a spare bedroom in my house and just feel upset that I'm not there. And you know the reason that I do it? Because it's literally just a slideshow of stuff. Yeah. The reason I do it is... The music, right? The music is so Uh, awesome. mm, So awesome. That makes me angry. See, look, look what they do. They hit you in every... They get you wanting to be in that experience in every possible way. You don't even think about it. And YouTube doesn't, you know, end there when it comes to theme park music. We've talked about this on the show before. The 10-hour loop of the Splash Mountain you can find on there. Yeah. Just Dive put in, that folks. bad boy on. <laughs> Completely, you know, be at Splash Mountain even when you're sitting in your desk. Great. Great. Love your next bullet point, Connor. Hit that one. That's great. You got to watch a couple Disney movies at home. Of course. That helps you get in the right mindset. So... Are there any movies in particular that you'll watch before a Disney trip, Hank? Um, I gotta admit, Disney's done something terrible, terrible to me, Connor. Terrible. Mm. Makes me want to put on Avatar before I go. No. <laughs> yeah, I'd love. We've we did a whole love segment for why how much we loved Avatar a couple shows ago. The, I mean, not Avatar, the world of Pandora, and where's the only other place where you can watch a fully immersive movie about that, <laughs> that world is the James Cameron movie, as fine as it is. I really, I mean, I like it, but that's one I actually do try to watch before I go down now, just because it's a teaser for that land. So, for Hank's bachelor party, we went down there, and we went a couple months after it opened. Right? It was only a couple months. Maybe even less than that. Yeah, I think, I think it was, was like, like a, a month. month. Yeah, a month. Yeah. And so a month after Pandora opened and, you know, it, the hype was real. We were staying at All Star Sports and in the um, uh, food court there, at the very back, there was one singular TV and it was just <laughs> playing Avatar on a loop. The entire time. So we would eat breakfast there, and sometimes we would have, like, dinner. And our last day there, we were all just so tired. And we had been there nine times before. But I remember me and two other friends, we had breakfast there, and we are getting ready to go on our flights back. And we were just staring, watching this movie. And, by the way, worst movie in the world to not be able to hear what's going on. (laughs) It made no sense. The film, even with words, makes no sense at all. Hey! But we were just, we were just l- zoned in on it. Yeah. But that's funny. That that wouldn't be mine. Um, mine is um Steve Gutenberg's uh, The Tower of Terror. Uh, really? No, absolutely not. Okay, I was about to <laughs> get up and walk out of the room. Um, for me, and probably especially for you know going down. I think well, I. When we're go. about to go down, I gotta watch Toy Story. Yeah, that is, a, that is a good one now. The land that, now open. I just it hits it. hard on my childhood nostalgia and love of Disney things. That was really peak Disney loving and Disney world for me. So I agree with that. Yeah. Toy Story yeah, definitely yeah. gets thrown in the mix of like pre-Disney world excitement. 
Especially with Toy Story Land now. How can oh, yeah. not? Yeah. Exactly. I exactly. feel like Lion King is like one of those iconic Disney movies, as iconic as, even though there's not like much Lion King in the park, that just like ties into that Disney experience for me. I don't know why. No, it is. It seems like it's removed, even though, you know, there's Festival of the Lion King and stuff. Yeah. It just seems not, there could definitely be more. Definitely. I, more I just I don't know if that's because it's like I loved Disney movies and Disney World growing up, so I would always watch Lion King before I went, even if it wasn't in the park. But that does get me ready. Right. That's true. Sprinkle in a little Disney magic. A little Disney magic. So whatever movie it is for you. Another one that might seem weird, but when you're saving for your trip, I always used to do this. Um, growing up, we had a jar on the kitchen table where we'd put our loose change in, yeah. and um, that was like our souvenir money. So we'd go take it to the coin star, um, lose seven percent, whatever. Exactly, whatever the stupid number is. Um, convert it to cash, and then you know us kids would be able to to get souvenirs from it. Um, but that's always something like you put a, a quarter in, you're reminded of your trip. You get a little excited, you know. That's just something, again, keeps Disney top of mind. Yeah. Then once you get there, and you got your magic band on, you've watched your movies, you've saved, you've got all your bloggers and vloggers um, that you loved, you get to MCO, Orlando International Airport, the first thing you see once you get off the plane, boom, Disney store. Boom, but, Buddy Dyer. <laughs> but, but you hear Buddy Dyer. <laughs> I'm Buddy Dyer. Welcome to the Disney store. Orlando. <laughs> Um, <laughs> much more than our world class theme parks. We have to find if he's up for re- re-election because he can't. He can't. He can't be removed from that thing. I don't care what his policies are. He can't. Well, be no, no, they actually can't remove it. They've found a way. They've gone into the monorail and they've said, "Crap, we hard coded this into the monorail. We can't he's take Buddy actually Dyer out." Has locked himself. He's a, he's a part in, of the structure. They can't he, remove Buddy Dyer. He's locked himself in the compartment where and he says that every single time the train goes hi i'm i'm orlando mayor but <laughs> oh god but when you see that disney store you're not going to go in it when you arrive no because mm-hmm. the best thing to do is once you've taken the tragical express and your vacation's over that's going to be the last disney thing you go into mm-hmm. pop in there see if you need anything else it's a good way to ease you out of your trip right but yep. still keeps it fresh what would you call that thing that they send you once your trip is, is that over? like a monolith? Monolith? Is something that the, like am that. I thinking of the right word? It's something like that. But you know what this reminds me of? And now it's just jogging my memory. Because my parents used to help me get these when I was a kid growing up. But I can't remember them that well. But you would get like stencil drawings from like movies or like VHSs. You'd get like mm. these like drawings you'd either order them or they'd come i should have looked this up it just popped into my head but anyways it's a drawing that comes in the mail on a firm piece of you know paper that's been um kind of go ahead i i'm not describing this well basically once you come home a couple weeks after disney sends you a, a letter saying hey thanks for coming here's a little gift and it's usually one of the fab five characters drawn out in stencil form like on um on paper by one of the artists it's it's obviously a print so it's not an actual one but oh it's yeah a, it's a cool piece i have a couple of them you know I, I have a lot of them but i have a couple of them i like to display in my room um and that's just a, it's just an incredible absolutely incredible touch that helps you you know um remember it and right. when you get that and you display it it helps you keep the magic going, and those souvenirs that you bought, you got to display those loud and proud too, because that will help remind you of the great times that you had at the parks. Yeah, it's like once you feel like your vacation's over and you're like not being touched by the Disney magic anymore, you get that thing in the mail and you're like, my God, it's my still God, going. I'm here. But we're back. We're back. Yeah, it really does transport you back for a second. And we've talked about, you know, kind of putting your phone down while you're in the park before but listen i still think it's an incredible tool to help you remember so when you're in the parks yeah feel free to post to social whether it's facebook instagram or twitter because that's something that 
you can easily reminisce on later yeah. um, when you go home. Time hop, that's always a big thing when Facebook's like, or Google Photos is like, three years ago you were in Disney World and you're, you you kind of cry for a little bit because mm-hmm. it's cold and it's uh, December here. But <laughs> you got to take plenty of photos because that'll help you constantly yeah. remember your trip and keep Disney in your mind. Oh, it's so... Yeah, and they obviously it's Disney World. It's bright, it's colorful, it's warm. You're in Florida. All the photos you took, you're happy in you're in the happiest place on earth. Why wouldn't you? Why shouldn't you load up on photos? It's your God-given it, right. Right, it's not like you're taking all these dark photos of like your your dinner in, you know, Vegas that you went to. Exactly. You're in Disney World. You're not, you know, it's the most photogenic place probably in the United States, well, you know, man-made. There is actually some things for that. Kodak was a big sponsor. Yeah. And um, the red on Main Street helps get produce a great photo because it contrasts with the white huh. on uh, the castle. And Kodak actually, um, you know, came up with that idea for Disney. So huh. pretty, pretty sweet. I can't remember if it translates to digital photos, but... That was the thing. Wow. And if you're really gung-ho about remembering your experience, you can keep a journal, you can start a blog, or you can even start a vlog. That's a great way to share your experiences with others because, remember, you're going to be going looking for these people when you're planning your next trip. So why don't you give something out to the world as well? I've done it here. Hank and I do it with this podcast. Um, It's a great way just to share your story about it, uh, about your trip. Connor, what is your favorite outside the park, outside the land, outside the world touch of Disney magic? This might sound weird, but I watch it every single year, and that's the Disney Parks Christmas Parade. Because it's it's so... It's not directly at me, you know? It's not like they're sending me the magic bands. They're not sending me, you know, the character sketch after it. But it's just because it's so consistent and because it's just part of my Christmas routine and because Christmas is so important, you know, you're with family, you're with friends and that's on. And you know, even if you're not there, you can still experience the, you know, the most important holiday of the year, watching the, your favorite place in the entire world. I like that touch. I like that touch. Connor, I think for me, I'm going to be simple. I'm going to be basic. It's the it's the magic band the box, yeah. It's it's a go to. It's it's picturesque. There's nothing more exciting than ripping that thing open. Um, you know, you don't even have to open it, but you do. No, but you do. But you do. Um, yeah, I open it every single time, no matter what, just so that I can see it, just so I can stare at it. Um, I know what it's gonna be in there. I already have nine, so I don't need to bring any of the other ones. And guess what? They all say your name on it. They all say my name on it, but I have to open it every single time. Um, It's just like, it's like the telltale heart. It's like, I can hear it beating. I'm like, I have to open it. I have to open it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it costs Disney absolutely nothing to print your name on the back of those things oh but there's something god, about no. <gasps> oh my gosh they put my name on the back of it can you probably believe cost that? more to mail it because they mail it first class yeah and because the united states postal service is making up funny greedy. names for your friends and family oh yeah oh yeah picking picking colors they didn't ask for uh-huh uh, oh. it's a tale as old as time as they say so i think when it comes to you know, passing the time. It's all about the little things, right? It's not about completely being obsessive over it, which you can be. But as long as you keep it top of mind, I think you're going to go into a Disney trip better off than if you just kind of went into it all blind. You know, it's also more fun. I mean, the whole that's what the whole purpose of this thing is. That's what it comes down to is to have a blast at this trip. And when you can, you know, plan it out in a way where each week you're you're doing a new task or you're looking into something new, that's just going to make it more fun for you in the end. I couldn't agree more, Connor. I'm just here, awesome. I'm just staring at you. I'm just like, yep, he's you right. Are. 
It's a little creepy. Hey, we do a podcast. That's how we manage the time in between our own trips. Hey, very good. You can start one. We'll listen. Let us know. We like. Uh, we love seeing other people that listen to our podcast that have their own. Absolutely. We. You don't have to be that gung ho like we are, but if you can keep Disney top of mind in between trips, that time's going to be a little easier to handle when you're not at the parks. But. That's going to do it for us this week. As always, thank you so very much for listening to the show. Be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and share the show with someone you think might enjoy it. If you like what you heard today, then you've been listening to the WDW Opinion Podcast. If, by chance, you didn't like what you heard, then you've been listening to Armchair Expert with Dak Shepard. For Hank, I'm Connor. We'll see you real soon.